Music can play a very integral part in any given work. If used correctly, it can heighten the emotion of a scene and tie every element that play into a full-blown experience. Despite this, music and sound design are something that is often left absent from reviews, critiques, and people's notice in general. Even when it is mentioned, it's usually about the music itself and not how it was used within the work in question. It also feels that even a lot of directors don't really give that much thought into the score until their last night booked in the Avid Suite. That's what I want to talk to you about today, or tomorrow, or whenever you watch this past the point that I made it. And what better way to do this through than through a whiny, pretentious YouTube video? Just to clarify, most of these examples won't be based on whether I like the actual music itself. I have many OSTs that I listen to on their own, some even quite often, but the vast majority of films or shows that I think have good soundtracks only work when they are played in context. The key goal for any score is to match or contrast with the feel of the scene, and though it certainly helps if the tracks make for a good listen, enhancing the vision should take maximum priority. The key phrase here is enhancing the vision, not substituting it. Music can all too often be used as a cover to try and trick the audience into thinking a scene has more energy than it actually does. Take a look at this video that removes the score from the end of E.T. The end result is some shambling footage that is emotionally flat and drudged. And this could be done to a lot of things. If you take away the rocking, super edgy, rising spirit go, woo, yeah, fighting time battle music from most shonen, you're left with pretty much nothing. An extremely wide berth of films, shows, games, etc. that I feel are lackluster and generic are exacerbated because their music is basically telling the audience what to feel. This is a super fun funny scene guys, you should be laughing a lot. This scene is action packed, get excited mate! Oh man, this scene's so sad man, so sad, heart wrenching scene, cry every day man. You know, instead of actually making something that is funny, exciting, or heart wrenching. When this is applied on a large scale, it becomes something that I like to call music flooding. This is when almost every beat of a show or film is completely saturated with music, with almost no pauses in between. The two things that most frequently befall flooding are student films and dubs of children's anime. Student films because of inexperience and frequent lack of screen energy, and children's dubs because <laughs> fuck, kids are so stupid they need to be told what to feel about everything. Quickly dump every audio file you have in there, brick wall the motherfucker, the kids will change the channel if there's but a millisecond of silence! Like seriously, I watched a dubbed episode of the first season of Pokemon and timed the pauses in the music. The longest was four seconds, and I'm pretty sure there was only half a second of what could actually be considered silence. Now obviously most don't go to this extreme, but with too many works I get the feeling that the director just slapped two or three random songs from the OST together. Like, they just didn't care. Just like how having 10 action scenes in a row would become tiresome without context, music only works when it's contrasted against the silence. Anything else, then it just becomes wallpaper. An example of this contrast is this scene from Heat. The quiet ambience of the diner contrasts with what the criminal characters are talking about. The bit where he smashes the guy's head having more impact because everything goes silent. When they move outside and the music starts, it's to emphasize the spontaneous and dangerous nature of their situation. Having quiet drama scenes and loud action scenes seems like the most obvious way to go, and in many cases it works great, but I personally quite like it when the reverse is used. Take the car chase scene from Bullet. It's aged and slow paced, so you might not find it very exciting, but it's a perfect example. A cool and slick, yet slightly tense jazz track plays over the portion where McQueen is tailing the perps, setting up an air of coolness and badass about the character and setting. When the chase actually starts, the roar of the engine and screech of the tyres cuts off the music and shatters the peaceful mood, leaving no feeling but the frantic need to catch the crooks. This means that the rest of the chase is held up by the beefy sound design and the understated action, helping create a better sense of grit and realism than if some cheesy rock track had played over it instead. Another great example is the film version of Ghost in the Shell. With the exception of the final battle, every action scene in the movie is without score. Especially with the hacker chase down at the start, the lack of glorification or spectacle with any of the set pieces conveys the sense that both the characters and the city go through things like this every day. Even during the final fight, the music holds a brooding ambience, the slow, stirring notes of the piece emphasizing the destruction and ruin of the museum, the character, and humanity's ties to its past. You know, symbolism and artistry and having a point to your scenes and all that quaint shit. Could you imagine if instead the Major popped into the museum, saw the tank, and everything started going I don't think it would have been quite the same. I don't know, it's the little things that do it for me. Slizzard Quake's light motif in Barkano isn't played while he's doing something horrific, it's played just after, as if the full weight of what he has done has only just hit us. Obviously, I'm not saying that everything should take this reverse approach. A, because it wouldn't fit with a large percentage of stories, and B, because if everything used it, then it would become trite and blasé. And I'm also not saying that music should be removed entirely, I just think it should be used less excessively. Score may be one of the last stages of production, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't be played 
planned out from the start. Making everything up at the last minute in the edit and slapping tracks over a shit show doesn't turn it into a good one. It turns it into a shit show that gives me listeners fatigue. Anyway, that's just what I've been thinking about lately. Maybe you should have a think about it yourself. Or don't, because I shouldn't tell you what to do and you'd look like the biggest goober in the world watching a film or show with a notebook, spectrograph and stopwatch at hand.